Hello, my name is Carla Day Johnson and I'm with the Hedberg Public Library Art Committee. We're here today to talk about the artwork that will be on display for the month of March. It was done by an artist named Charlie Whitehead and with me today is his father Jeffrey Whitehead to talk about Charlie's influence and his artwork. Charlie died in June of 2011 and we are here to honor him with this display at the library. So welcome Jeff. It's nice to meet you. Sorry for your loss, Charlie. Nice let's to meet talk. you as well. Let's talk about that. Yeah. What did, uh, what did Charlie's artwork, where did that all start? Well, uh, Charlie had very severe cerebral palsy and was quite limited in his forms of expression. Um, one of the ways early on he began to express himself was drawing. Okay. And so um, it just grew organically, really. He just um, drew more and more. And, sometimes needed help controlling his, his muscles um, to relax him enough to draw mm -hmm. um, with, with medicine or sometimes devices. And he just drew and then painted after a while and kept on, kept on going his whole life. He was Evolving. painting the day before he died. Really? Now educate me a little bit. Cerebral palsy usually leaves their victims unable to speak and with lack of muscle control? Yeah, if there's, a, there's an entire range. Some people you might not even know they have it. Uh, others, it's very severe. Uh, Charlie was in the severe end of things. He, okay. was, he was in a wheelchair. He was fed through a tube. Okay. Um, uh, he was very expressive. Uh, for better and for worse sometimes, it didn't affect his intellect. Mm -hmm. So he was quite aware of his, his disability. And through his facial expressions, um, a great deal. We knew exactly what he was thinking. Uh, that must have been a hard thing to watch someone who you knew was so expressive, uh, unable to talk. Yeah, yeah. You don't think about that until you're confronted with it. Yes. And so, how did the artwork start? When he was when he was little, gave him a crayon, that kind of a thing. I remember giving him um, writing instruments. I don't remember crayon, pencil. Uh, from a very, very young age, just mm -hmm. sitting him on, on my lap and um, holding his arm at his elbow so he could, he could move his, uh, his wrist mm -hmm. uh, without moving his arm like that. And it was pretty fun to see. He, he really he had a style that started off early and he just developed. So did you see artwork with Charlie as um, just part of his life or as a, a therapy of sorts for his... Oh, certainly both. Both? Oh, it certainly was. He, you know, we all want to feel valued and we all want to feel um, admired for something mm -hmm. and that's something that he could have since he, he couldn't be valued in some other ways. And how did that, um, uh, I don't know how he dealt with his community, with your community around you, but how, did the artwork help him reach out to other people as well? Yeah, um, yeah, it certainly did because it, first of all, gives somebody something to talk about. I think many people, when they see somebody who's not speaking and is, is a wheelchair, they don't know what's going on there, and mm -hmm. by having a piece of art to talk about, that broke a lot of barriers. I would imagine, mm -hmm. I would imagine. And uh, did he have friends that he painted with as well? Did that become a community part? Or was it pretty much his individual work? No, he, he, would, he would be at shows, galleries, openings with others, but uh, for the painting itself, he was by himself. Yeah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, how did you go on? I understand a book was written about Charlie's art. Explain that process to me. Well, um, my current wife Lindsay and our two little boys um, ha have always been interested in publishing and um, in a different edition of my life I was I was a writer and put out some books uh, in a very different area and uh, Lindsay really took it upon herself to um, get his, his, his book out there. Um, it took an extraordinary amount of work it really all started with this painting right here. This one here? Um, that was hanging in our kitchen uh, at our, our house. And our then six, eight-month-old 
baby, who's now seven and quite an artist himself, um, would be constantly reaching for it as we were holding him. He'd always be turning around looking at it and wanting it, and he was interacting with this colorful piece of abstract art, and it, it connected with him. Mm -hmm. And that got her thinking that um, uh, she could make a, a board book uh, for babies, mm -hmm. for small children uh, of his paintings. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was published about a year ago, I think. And did you feel that his art, artwork had a special, it obviously has a special meaning for you, but did you think it would reach other children the same way? I would like to take credit, but I can't. That would be Lindsay. She, okay. uh, she, she uh, worked about pretty tirelessly on it and just believed from the start that it would be um, something that would, uh, other children would connect with. Okay. And what kind of Proved feedback? To be right. I was going to say, what kind of <laughs> feedback have you gotten? Well, uh, he, his artwork was, was, when I was at the Cole Children's Museum and another children's museum whose name is escaping me in the Chicago area, mm -hmm. um, there were often, we would just see kids just clustered around them looking and then being a children's museum with a thousand other forms of stimulation mm -hmm. they would mm -hmm. scatter elsewhere but mm -hmm. it, it uh, by itself brought the kids over and what kind of response have you had to the book it's it's been it's it's been really fun um, people of all walks of life often with young babies or grandparents um, with a young baby in the family have found out about it and uh, really um, given some wonderful feedback. That's excellent. Yeah. That's rewarding. It's, it's, it is rewarding. It's <laughs> what do you think Charlie would think of that? Oh, he loved babies. He, he always loved babies. Um, he was the oldest. He had a younger uh, sister and brother and then his two half-brothers. Mm -hmm. And he always loved babies. There's something about him and, and babies that connected. So I think he would he'd be very happy about that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. well, let's look at something else that you brought in here. Here's one of Charlie's work. Tell me about this. Well, that's part of a whole series. Um, there's probably 20 of those, um, at least, uh, all small on 4x4 four four canvas. Mm -hmm. um, that, I believe, is a print off of the canvas. Yeah, it looks too smooth. Um, and he just did a study in four colors and uh, echoing shapes. Mm -hmm. And I'm not this sort of artist. I don't know what goes on in someone's head when they just try a thematic approach mm -hmm. and explore slight variations on a theme. Um, but some of them are quite charming. We used one of them for the cover um, uh, in that series. All right. When, when Charlie worked, did he, um, like you say, he took this as a, a, um, a set or, um, you know, learn from one, go to the next, that kind mm -hmm. of an idea. Did he do that often or was he more of a random, uh, I'm just going to put some paint down on paper? No, he did, he had several series. Yeah. Yeah, where he would have uh, certain uh, paint colors or, or, or materials to paint upon and would explore themes. So you think he looked at artwork not as simply something to do, but something that he did, something that meant Oh, absolutely. He yeah, he was the real deal. He, 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 was, he was, I would have loved to have talked to him about why he did things, yes. um, but the answers were often just right on, That's right. right on the page. Right. Well, let's look at the other one here you've brought in. Oh, I don't know where both, I don't know which way to put that one. Color. That's how oh, okay. I've been putting it lately. <laughs> I started putting it the other way. Okay. I, uh, this one I like just because it's it's pretty raw. It's um, mm -hmm. very atypical. Um, he went over and over certain areas to build up paint and get texture. Mm -hmm. That's a I hadn't seen him do much of that before. Um, that's a pretty light one. That was what he was doing. Um, this is another, this, these are both watercolor, where this is acrylic or oil. That's acrylic, acrylic? yeah. Okay. He did a, acrylic, he did acrylic and a little oil. I don't think much oil, but yeah, he, he would switch mediums periodically mm -hmm. and run with that for several months. 
Um, I don't know. I, I've always been charmed by that one, but I don't see it as typical at all of him. Mm -hmm. Just an experiment that he did. There's mm -hmm. nothing else like it. Did Charlie have any formal training? Well, he was... Um, no, he had no formal training. Uh, he had some uh, people in his life who were very, very um, good artists. One of his high school teachers happened to be a very good artist in his own right and um, worked with him a lot uh, okay. when he was in high school. And we bought enormous numbers of art books and would just go through pages and just let him absorb what some mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. often masters, but sometimes much more obscure people um, had done. and. Something transferred. He, he learned from some, from somewhere, I think. Well, he was obviously very visual. That very visual, yeah. yeah. And that he was very, able very to bright. transpose that through his hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what did you think about all that while it was going on? Well, you know, as a father, it's always relief. You want your children to be excited about something, engaged in something. In his case, I was all, all the more grateful because they didn't have that many options. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he could communicate by a, a adapted computer keyboard, but that was very time consuming and yeah. this was something where he could get a more immediate result mm -hmm. in, the, in the general sense anyway. Yeah, that's, um, it's always a relief when your kids are happy about something. Getting involved <laughs> in something. That's right. Yeah. I want them to be bored. And we are going to see the rest of his artwork during the month of March at the library here. What do you plan to do in the future with with uh, the wonderful things that Charlie has left for you? Well, um, we have we have ideas. There's certainly another uh, children's book um, that, that coming out. It was very difficult to pick the um, pick the paintings to to put into the book and a lot of wonderful ones got left out. Okay. So another book. There's another book right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then I would also like to make a, a compendium. Um, there's a number that have to be tracked down. He he sold a number and some will not be found. Mm -hmm. Some are just out there probably in the Madison area, or perhaps Boston area. Um, and I would love to track them down but there's probably always going to be a few out there that we don't we don't get to cover. We have scanned about 150, and there's probably close to 200 out there. Wow. And we just make the, uh, the the scanning disc available to anybody who mm -hmm. who wants it. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, again, your your wife would be the one who would be doing the wording for the book. Oh, that's my little contribution. I did yeah. the I, I did the words. That's uh, I'm a I'm a writer, and I um, I that was I was corralled into that job. So what's it like <laughs> doing children's books? You know, it's interesting. With Charlie, I wrote several children's books that never went anywhere. Uh -huh. I was teaching writing and writing books myself during part of that time, and we did some of that together, um, but it just never, never got off the ground. I mm -hmm. still have them somewhere in the box. I think everybody has a children's book in the back of their mind somewhere. And most I think of you're, them don't. yeah. As you're reading them to children, you're thinking, oh, I could, I could do something could like do that. Yeah. <laughs> or, or telling stories to your own children and realize that they are something that everyone could enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I had something. Um, maybe when I get old someday, I can do that. <laughs> what would you like to think was um, Charlie's greatest contribution during his short life? Oh, uh, just just the connection you could you could make with him. He had a fantastic sense of humor. Um, it was just it was wonderful laughing with him. He he loved he loved a a, a good joke, a good prank, a, uh, um, a a situation that was pretty goofy, mm -hmm. and he really enjoyed enjoyed that stuff. Just just his his personality, just being around it. I felt lucky. And he left all of this artwork for us. I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad we have it. We were able to, to get a hold of much of it uh, fairly quickly after he, he died, and that was that was lucky. A, a lot of people had to come together and 
um, give it to us, trusting that we would copy it and give it back to them. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that was uh, that, that was a good thing. Like I said, there's probably about 150 uh, paintings right now that we know about. And about how many will we be seeing at the library exhibit? As many as you want. As many as you can fit on the wall. I don't know. It's I don't, I don't think we're in charge of that, are we? Uh, uh, that we'll, we'll have to discuss that. <laughs> we yeah. want to see as much as we can, certainly. Yeah, we'll try to select some that are, 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 are varied mm -hmm. so people can see some of the variety he did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming in today and talking with us. Oh, you're it's so very honor. welcome. It's an honor to show Charlie's work, and oh. we so look forward to it. Well, wonderful. Thank you. Please come to the library for the month of March to see the artwork of Charlie Whitehead. Thank you.